Hello, one and all. This is Luck with Sublocks, and welcome to Outer Wilds. I don't know a ton about this game. I just heard about it not long ago. The reviews looked really good on it, and it looked like the type of game, the type of adventure that I feel like going on right now. So I thought I'd give it a shot, see how it is, and see what you guys think about it. And maybe we'll have a new series on our hands. So without further ado, let's jump into Outer Wilds and see what it's all about. It looks, it looks really cool. Wake up. Huh. Look around and move. It looked like something just appeared in the sky there. Like some broken debris? Maybe a broken ship? Weird. All right. Talk to Slate. There's a pilot back from your pre-launch camp out under the stars, I see. So it's launch day, eh? Seems like only yesterday you joined the space program and suddenly here you are, leaving on your first solo voyage. What do you say? Ready to get this beauty off the ground? It's all fueled up and ready to go. Got a few dialogue options, okay. All systems go. Four eyes, eh? Literally four eyes. All systems go. I'm ready if you are. You're sure you fixed the retro rockets? Are you sure? That was only a problem one time. And then maybe a few times after that. But hey, no reason to dwell on the past, right? Anyway, you'll need to get the lodge codes from Hornfells at the observatory before you can lift off. Just bring those here once you said your goodbyes or whatever. So he must be like a, like an engineer or a crafter or something. Is that, oh, we have a body. Oh, oh, we look just like him. Interesting. Roast marshmallow. Okay, already I'm getting like, <laughs> I'm getting Firewatch vibes already. That's great. How do you guys like your marshmallows? I don't like them. Mm. That's probably a bit overdone for my liking. We're going to toss that one. I want to just kind of like. I don't want it to be burnt, you know? Okay, I see it's, it's warming up. It's warming up. Oh, how does that look? A little a little more. A little more. It's got to. It's got to be, you know, just right, but not burnt. Okay, that looks. That actually looks pretty good. You know, a little brown, but not burnt. Perfect. <laughs> I guess I could just do this forever if I wanted to. That's funny. Good start. Good start. Mm, some notes. A wrench. Oh, look at that. It looks like. Time of day is changing. Got a, maybe a launch pad up there. Requires launch codes. Okay, so that's what we need to find. What else can I do? So A jumps. This is where we camped out. Whoa, what was that? Oh man, look at that some like gas coming out of it and creating a shadow like a meteor or something i don't know um oh so if i hit y it opens this up frequency outer wilds ventures it's like a microphone Weird. Oh. Hmm. 
weird. It's like a harmonica? Okay. I'll have to keep that in mind. Oh, hold, hold and release the jump. You can see our shadow. I'm loving the art style already. This is exactly the kind of thing that I need right now. Oh, someone else. Mika. Hey, it's you. Slate said you're blasting off in your ship today. I'm really excited to see the launch. Aren't you going to go into space? Aren't you? You better not have changed your mind. Hey, I'm still going. I want to practice with a pro before I leave. I hear you and Slate beefed up the model ship. Can I see it? Let's go with that. Yeah, we've recalibrated the controls and installed better thrusters. Want to give it a test drive? Slate says it's just like the real thing, only less likely to start a fire. That's not giving me a lot of confidence. Okay. Try to land on one of the geyser pools. Show me what you got. Oh, okay. Fly model ship. I guess the geyser pools are those things in front of us. Um, horizontal thrust, the left stick, right trigger, left trigger, uh, up and down thrust. Looks like it's moving forward a bit too when we do an upward thrust. Okay. Whoa. Okay, yeah, let's let's land on this one. Good. Uh wait. Can I get it? <laughs> let's reset. <laughs> okay, let's try to land properly on this back one. Man, this reminds me of my childhood. Try again. One more time. <laughs> I keep wanting to, like, hit the left stick to go back. I think we got to be, like, a bit more careful. Come on. Okay. There we go. Now let's get into this geyser. What's well, actually geysing? That's a term, right? Geysing? Okay, hold on. I want to get... I want the geyser to be going. Or what if I just drop in? Whoa! <laughs> Wait, I want to go... I want to go in. Well, it's not geysing. Did we just fall into the the middle of the planet? Whoa! <laughs> I'm hitting I'm hitting right and left trigger. But see, there must be a whole area down there. Okay. Wow, that was just like the time the external fuel tanks exploded on re-entry. You'll you'll be okay flying the big one, right? Okay, repeating themselves. Let's explore some more. This is great. I saw a few other people down here. Do you have a launch tower? Hey! Who's this? Horphy. Hey, yo, hatchling. I hear you're leaving us to seek adventure amongst the stars. When you return, Let's you, me, and Gosan open up a bottle of the good stuff. I'm only seeking adventure amongst one star, actually. Other stars are too far away. The good stuff is less delicious sap wine and more daunting digestive challenge. <laughs> I like the sassy answers. You guys know me. I'm always going to go with the sassy answers. An iron stomach is the mark of a true hearthian, my friend. So this is a uh, hearth. And we're Harthians. Our hardy hunter-gatherer lifestyle stems from trial and error, by which I mean our ancestors survived eating a lot of bad things. Oh, the astronaut returns. Yeah, I've already gone and done my thing and now I'm back. So let's share that drink now. 
Tell me, what can I do for you? Any new dirt? What are you up to? I'm good, actually. Let's find it with the dirt. I'm hoping to teach Esker to tap trees next time they return from the Adel Rock. If they'll bring me lunar sap, I can attempt moon wine. Okay. What are you up to? Well, I've just finished sealing up another batch of sap wine for aging. I like to begin aging a batch on the day of a significant occasion, you know? That's why there are so many bottles labeled Structural Collapse and House Fire. <laughs> what was the last thing? I'm good, actually. Enjoy your travels. Stru structural Collapse and House Fire. Outer Wilds Ventures presents postcards from orbit. Uh, Rutile? You're actually blasting off in that thing, huh? Huh, they really don't explode as often anymore. I've told my odds of survival are statistically quite high. Yeah, the space program, uh, the space program certainly come a long way. I should probably thank you for causing fewer flash fires than your predecessors. By the way, good luck with those retro rockets. Hey, what can I do for you? Are you gonna watch the launch? Do you really worry that the space program will burn the village down? <laughs> let's let's ask if he's gonna watch the launch. Of course. I'll be watching from a safe distance, obviously, and mostly to make sure nothing catches fire. But watching nonetheless. And the other option, do you really worry that the space program will burn the village down? Only constantly, you learn to live with it. You also learn to sleep with a bucket of water next to your bed, just in case. <laughs> Use satellite camera. This projector is linked to our Sky Shutter satellite, which is currently orbiting Timber Hearth. Hearth, sorry. Timber Hearth. Okay. Satellite is equipped with two onboard cameras. See if you can take a snapshot of our village. Uh, right shoulder button, forward snapshot, rear snapshot. There's a geyser. That must be the village there. Observatory. Can I change anything else? Huh, what's that? It's like a broken bridge. Whoa. Cool, there's something in there. This pilot seat used by pioneering astronaut Feldspar is all that remains of our inaugural flight into space. <laughs> Feldspar does not remain. Although it's been argued such a distinction requires a breathtakingly liberal definition of flight, that day will nevertheless always be remembered as, landmark, as a landmark achievement in Harthian history. What's this all about? Okay. <laughs> Just different parts of the program, I guess. Water wheel. Marl with the axe. So it's launch day, huh? Hal's gonna miss you. Speaking of launch day, I was thinking about it. And the platform those ships launch from is getting old. Isn't it about time you built a new, less flammable one? Everyone's really obsessed with not catching fire here. I don't blame them. That big tree in the village would be the perfect choice. I wouldn't mind helping out the space program. Just say the word. The current launch pad is fine, thanks. Nice try. We all, we all know you have it out for that tree. <laughs> launch pad is flammable? <laughs> I knew a nice try. We all know you have it out for that tree. That one made me laugh. What? No, I, I just think it's in the way and someone ought to chop it down, you know? Specifically me. <laughs> you 
You think this has to do with the time I fell out and broke my arm? That was when we were hatchlings. Who would hold a grudge for that long? He's looking up. At the tree, is it? Is he talking about that tree? It looks like there's something on it. That tree has got it coming. <laughs> really wants to take down the tree. I guess I can't go into these buildings, right? No. Oh, neat. Uh, niece? Or niece? Or nice? Hello there, Space Cadet. I hear you're leaving the crater today. If you meet any of the other travelers up there, remind them to take proper care of their instruments, won't you? Tell me about the traveler's instruments. That's probably a good idea. We should probably find out about those. Oh, sure. I made all of their instruments, you know. Let me see. There's Church's drum, Ryback's banjo, and Cabro's flute. Oh, those instruments. <laughs> Musical instruments. Okay. And Feldspar's harmonica, of course. Oh, we heard harmonica. Though Feldspar's been missing for a long time. Sometimes it feels like just yesterday they were playing their harmonica around the campfire. Anyway, you hear music in space. That'll be one of the space program's other travelers. If you feel like company, you can always pull out your signal scope and track them down. Trouble is, every time a Harthian leaves for outer space, that's one less musician in our orchestra. So, did you need something? Where's the observatory? Sure, we should ask about that. It's questions like that what make us worried about you going up into space on your own, you know? <laughs> the observatory is up the path behind the waterfall. There are a couple of signs marking the way, but really, you just keep going up and then hook a right when you get to the Zero-G cave. Um, okay, what's the last thing? No, I'm good. Take care of yourself up in space. Now we're gonna try. Ow. <laughs> if you smash, if you smash into it, it makes a noise. That's great. Okay, so we heard the harmonica. I wonder if we fall down there, if we can get to him. Hmm. Tefra. Hello, astronaut. If it isn't my favorite troublemaker, what's at the radio? If it isn't my favorite troublemaker, we wanted to play hide and seek, but. Moraine won't let us borrow their signal scope because it's really delicate and not supposed to be thrown around like that. Hey, hey, can we use your signal scope? Can we? Can we please? We'll even let you be it. Oh, this is maybe teaching us how to use it. Uh, like do like a hide and go seek kind of thing. Let's try. Woohoo! Okay, here are the rules. Galena and me will hide with these radios and you'll use your signal scope to find us. Last one to be found wins. Okay, close your eyes and start counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, I see them. Uh, I think I have to jump from that side, though. Ah, oh, you found me, but my hiding spot was super good. Don't forget, you have to find both of us, okay? Ow. On the roof there? Aha. Uh, I w is that like quiet? I, I won? I'm happy. Thanks for playing with us. Aww. Aww, that's so adorable. 
The jumping is uh, taking me some time to get used to. Am I supposed to go? Oh! Oh! <laughs> Ouch! Okay, well, you take fall damage, I guess. We figured that out. Uh, how do I get out of here? There we go. I kind of want to fall down the geyser. It's going to kill us, though, isn't it? I don't really want to die right away. The observatory is that way. Got a fisherman here. Spinel, spinel, spinel. Fishing rhyme, fishing rhyme. Singing helps me pass the time. You're leaving the crater? Guess we'll all be a little busier without you around to lend a hand. That big water planet? Giant's deep. That's where I'd go. Why is that? One time after the rest of the village had left to sleep, and it was just the two of us sitting around the campfire, Gabbro told me about their first trip to Giant's Deep. I am so looking forward to like traveling the stars. That is so cool. They landed their ship easily enough in the waves, but couldn't uh but couldn't see too far deep. Uh too, too far down on account of how murky the water was. I guess too dark. Gabbro wants to see what lay beneath the surface, so they decided to travel deeper. They traveled down and down, but suddenly Gabbro couldn't go any further. Yeah, Giant's Deep has a current you can't pass through. I underestimated how boring this would be. <laughs> I want to know more. I will. I, I was just pausing dramatically. As though exercising a will of its own, the water was refusing to let Gabbro go any deeper. It held Gabbro back, almost as if it were trying to protect them from something. And then... In the terrible darkness, Gabbro saw it. The tentacle of some hideous beast. Ah! I mean, that's what Gabbro said anyway. Whatever it was, it freaked Gabbro out pretty good. Everyone wants to hear new stories at the village campfire, you know? Make sure you bring some back with you. Is that the whole reason why we're going out there? To bring back stories? There's more stuff. Um, looking for Hornfells. Oh, them? I bet today's haul they're in the observatory. Not that I've caught anything yet, but if I had, I'd definitely bet it. Hornfells is pretty much always in the observatory. All right, let's go. Let's go to the observatory. Neat. There's the ship. I think. Another geyser. The zero G cave, the observatory is that way. Gosan. Hey, I thought I might see you before the big launch. Nerves getting the better of you? Right, like you weren't nervous for your first flight. I'm a little nervous, yeah. Are you kidding? I'm a natural. Yeah, we're, we're a natural. Did you see the way I was flying that toy ship? We're definitely natural at this. Is that so funny? I seem to recall the first time you strapped on a jetpack. We had to come fish you out of the crater near the South Pole. So listen, there's a satellite, which is definitely not just a piece of broken mining equipment set up down in the Zero-G cave and in need of repairs. If you're looking for a little last minute zero G practice, head down the lift and into the cave. Or don't, so long as you're confident you can make the ship repairs in space. One repaired satellite coming up. Cool, get to it. And try not to concuss yourself right before your first launch. We'll do our best. Okay, we're going down. Maybe this is where we'll find the harmonica player. Oh. Kind of feels like space. Whoa. Oh, flashlight.
That's the radio. Oh, and the other, so there's like two sounds. I really like the way that it, that's presented. But no harmonica, okay. Yep, okay, gravity's definitely different here. Zero G cave. Suit up. Okay, so up thrust, down thrust. Basically the same principle as the the uh, toy rocket we were using. And we can walk as well. Tough. Hey, hey, nice of you to drop down. Getting some zero G in time. Give me the dirt. Like literally the dirt that he's mining. Getting some zero G time in, you know, kind of special. So you're going in there in the cave? Huh? What? Uh, no, I'm fine. Great. Great and fine. Missing part of his ear. Uh, you don't look fine. Well, you know, I hate that cave, so I don't know why you're making me talk about it. Huh. Now, now we've got s hand sweats. <laughs> Hey, you're back. You need something? Uh, I want the dirt. I'll only the dirt. Some fresh dirt. Not much happening down here lately. Let me think. Come to think of it, uh, Tektite saw something crash outside of the village crater earlier. That's new and different. Oh, hey, about that. Yeah. They were on fire watch with the old scout launcher and saw smoke. So they went to check it out. Safety first, right? No, I, I'm kidding. I, I said that to Tektite once. Pretty rude how long they laughed for, if you ask me. There's one more thing, right? Guess where I'm going today. Oh, no, 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 no way. You want to run off into space. That's your business. But don't make me, you know, think about it. Bad enough we got this weird cave down here. Okay, uh, so we're supposed to try to fix something. Whoa, okay. Still just the radio, it seems like. Okay. So that's where we started from, right? Yeah. Not really 100% sure where I'm supposed to go, but I guess down here. Nope. That's where we started. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. That sign was saying uh, to go down there. Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, what's this? Don't know. I think we can interact with at least. Am I really supposed to fall down there? Yikes. Oh, cool. There's even less gravity here. Oh, cool. Forward, backward. Zero of three repaired. And you could lock on, okay. Match velocity. To do repairs. Oh, neat. All right, I'm, I'm getting used to this. Do I need a tool to fix this or something?
I didn't see um, a way to repair it. Maybe I just had to get closer. Ah, there we are. Okay, this isn't too tough, actually. I like how it's got a match speed button that just, like, if you really get out of control, then, uh, that kind of, that kind of reins it in a bit. Now, where's the last bit to be repaired? The other side, I guess. Oops. Okay, 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 okay. It went a little too far. That one's already repaired. Did I miss it? Huh. Oh, that, there it is. No, 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 that one's fine. What the hell? Where's the last bit that needs to be repaired? Oh, and we have fuel too and oxygen. That's something to consider. Maybe that? That looks pretty busted. Oh, I have to go in, maybe? Oh, uh, okay. It's kind of going to be all about managing your fuel. Whoa, I went a bit too far there. Is there only one entrance? I think so. O2 level's still fine, though. Perfect. Ah, I really thought we'd find the harmonica dude down here somewhere. Oh, I turned the flashlight off. All right, let's head back up. I think we got enough practice on that. This is really neat. We're getting to uh, meet some of these characters, but also getting a tutorial on how to play the game. Kind of getting a sense for what the world is like that, uh, that we grew up on. Or we hurtle into space and probably burn ourselves to death. Nicely done, of course. It'll be a little more stressful when you're hurtling through space, but just remember your training and try not to hit anything big. I could see you're itching to get off this rock, so go get the launch codes from the observatory and get out of here already. I actually am. Best of luck out there, and hey, try to avoid getting yourself killed now that I've put so much time into training you. Got it? Got it, Gosan. Camera. It's like it's detecting some kind of energy. Danger! Inside this fence is a pocket of ghost matter. A strange and possibly cold substance that's invisible to the naked eyes. The good news is that you can detect ghost matter with the camera. Moving through ghost matter is uniquely painful and will probably kill you. Don't complain to me if you hurt yourself fooling around. Wormfells. Smart, smart person. Arcos. Oh, throwing rocks into the ghost matter. Hi, astronaut. You know, the patch of ghost matter inside this fence. Gosen said it used to be bigger when they were a hatchling. Because ghost matter evaporates. 
Okay. It just takes a s super long time to go away. I hope there's still ghost matter in the village when I'm grown up. Ghost matter is awesome. It's super cool. It'll burn the heck out of you. It's not, it's not very cool. Shouldn't be throwing rocks in there. Ghost matter is dangerous. Ah, we don't want to be a stick in the mud. You know ghost matter is how Tektite lost their foot, right? Hey, a little bit of a warning. Whoa, really? That is so cool. Okay, I want to get those launch codes. This doesn't seem like the right way. <laughs> of course, I'm just going to keep getting distracted, won't I? Moraine. Mm, oh, hello, astronaut. This is good weather for your launch, right? That's lucky. What are you up to? Any good sounds from space today? Let's go with what are you up to. I'm using my signal scope to pick up sounds from distant planets. It's set to the Outer Wilds Ventures... Whoa, frequency. So I can pick up the Traveler's music. Oh, look at that. Other planets or whatever. You can see them like rotating around. Last night I heard Rybeck's banjo coming from Brittle Hollow. I hope that means they're safe. I can hear different planets too. It depends on what time of day or night it is, since different planets are in the sky at different times. Signal scopes are good, or are cool, and good. I like how it's, they're all kind of playing the same tune. So that's what we heard. We, we heard other um, travelers in space. They're not actually on the planet. Except this guy. Harmonica. Oh, there's two harmonicas. That's two different spots. Slightly different tone. Neat. That's how you can find other people and talk to them. Now, what's this? I saw smoke coming from Young Bar Crater up north and figured I should go check it out. You can use the scout launcher. Just please don't break it while I'm gone. Tech type. Scout launcher. North Youngbark Crater. Northwest Geyser Mountains. Okay, what is this all about? Quantum Grove Crater. And then East Nomai Ruins. Oh, I see. Huh. Doesn't travel too fast, eh? So if I shoot like here, that might actually go into the ruins. I can't aim it up or down. Close. Okay, well, if we get into our ship, we should be able to just travel there, right? Nothing that way. Okay, observatory. Wait, did I go the right way? I think I did. Clearly a ramp that we have to jump off. Ow. Testing the old legs out. They just got a bit older. Hornfells, a Gosan, Feldspar, Esker, and Slate? 
Edder Wilds Ventures founding members. Clockwise from Pop Left, Hornfells, Ghost and Slate, and Feldspar. Big thanks to these additional uh, founding members of Edder Wilds Ventures, without whom we would never have gotten off the ground. Hehehehe. <laughs> Matthew Steinhauer. Ben Etherington. Cordial. Are these, are these backers or something? Or uh, something to do with the development of the game? Jordan Frith. Sean Shark Templar Farrell. Cool. Edderwilds Ventures Timber Hearth's first and only space program was founded to explore the farthest reaches of our solar system. Feldspar was the first uh, Hearthian to be initially launched, intentionally, <laughs> to be intentionally launched into space. A lot of accidental launches happened. Uh, they completed the first orbit around Timber Hearth and later made the first of what would be many landings on our moon, the Adel Rock. Hmm. This remarkably intact statue was carved by the Nomai, an ancient species who dwelled in our solar system thousands of years ago. I think we're going to find out more about them. The statue provides us with our most detailed look uh, yet at the Nomai, who appear to have been covered with a layer of fur. Note the decorative jewelry that has been carved as part of the antlers. Although their artifacts and structures have been found on almost every planet in the solar system, we still have no idea where this species came from, what happened to them. Hal. Hey, hey, it's my favorite astronaut. Launch day at last, huh, buddy? It's the Translator Tools Inaugural Flight 2. I'm so excited, it's making me nauseous. Just think, you'll be able to translate any Nomai text you want, anywhere you are. The two of us put a lot of hours into inventing that tool, so don't break it, okay? <laughs> oh jeez, do not break it. Uh, ignore me, okay? I'm just nervous, and I'm not even the one going into space. How are you feeling? I'm, <laughs> I'm, ex I'm actually really excited. Good! You've only been waiting for this day since you were hat since we were hatchlings. I can't wait to see uh to see all your training pay off. The, like my 20 minutes of training that I've done. So what's the dirt? Everyone loves saying that, eh? So what's the dirt? You here to see the new Nomai the new Nomai statue? Of course. Yeah, <laughs> I knew you'd want to see it before you headed off. Hornfell's just finished prepping it for display today. Amazing, isn't it? It makes me wish we could see what a real live Nomai looks like, but I guess this is as close as we'll ever get. Check it out. Looks like they had fur. Fur is weird. This is the first fully intact statue ever found, you know? And for how old it is, it's a great it's in great shape. Ah jeez, I got a little carried away there. Go on, you have a ship to launch. Take care of yourself out there, you hear? I wanna ask him one more thing. Um Where did the statue come from? From Giants Deep, Gabriel fished it out of, fished it out of the, one of the oceans and brought it back here for study. Hornfells doesn't know much about it yet, just that it's crazy old and super tough. Uh, I wonder why the Nomai carved it. Apparently, Gabriel went back to Giants Deep to try to learn more about the statue. Maybe they'll find some answers there. Was there something else? Where can I find Gabriel? Gabriel said they were going back to Giants Deep, to wherever they found that Nomai statue. One of the islands, I think. You remember Gabbro plays the flute, right? Like, all the time? I bet your signal soap could find them easily. If you do see Gabbro, say hi for me. Um... I think I'll discover something cool in space. Hey, you never know. Maybe you'll be the one to solve the mysteries of the Nomai. Or maybe you'll discover a new kind of rock or something. That's not too exciting. But honestly, as long as they don't end up naming new safety equipment after you, I'm sure you'll have done a great job. <laughs> that was it. No problem, take it easy. I'll try not to die out there. So many things to read. This piece of Nomai writing was essential to deciphering their unique language. Although this text is linear, Nomai text often branches off from a central point. Interestingly, each branch tends to be written by a different author. It's all about the Nomai. Aside from the dwelling and structures they built, the Nomai also made art. This decorated pottery was discovered on Brittle Hollow. Some ancient Nomai art depicts strange animals, foreign celestial objects, and other subjects that can't be found in our solar system, which makes us wonder whether the Nomai originated elsewhere in the universe or simply had vibrant imaginations. Were the Nomai born in our solar system? Or were they born among other stars and planets? And if they were, how and why did they come here? 
These are just some of the questions we hope to answer through further Xeno archaeological expeditions. Kind of like a kind of like a cradle. No my skeletons. What you see here are parts of the Nomai skeleton. We can tell from their skulls that they possess possessed antlers and quite unusually only three eyes. <laughs> of course, only three. The Nomai body was most likely adapted for living exclusively on land. The differences in the Nomai's anatomy, such as their shockingly fragile bone structure, show us that Harthians uh, couldn't have descended from Nomayan ancestors. It's not clear where the Nomai originated from or why they disappeared. We hope to find more clues to this puzzle as we explore our solar system. The Nomai technology brought back from space by our astronauts has been a great boon to Outer Wilds ventures, allowing us to modify expeditions, expedition gear in exciting and useful ways. For example, the Little Scout now boasts a warp retrieval capability that allows astronauts to recall their scouts almost instantly. Oh, so I bet you like that uh, tool that we use to shoot out the scout will be on the, the ship too, right? I just thought of that. This has dramatically reduced the number of scouts lost to the depths of space. This crystal was taken from a Nomai ruin on Brutal Hollow. It seems to create a local gravity distortion and was most likely used to traverse steep surfaces. Try it out! Oh, so I can walk. Interesting. Uh. Uh oh. Oh. <laughs> That's what you're supposed to do. Gotcha. That's the same thing. Some other planets. We're going to be there soon. I think that's on this one, right? That look like some of those ruins. Oh, let's start from here. Stars like our sun generate light and heat by fusing hydrogen into helium. As it grows older, the star runs out of hydrogen and starts to contract. As the star's core contracts, it gets, it gets hotter, causing the outer layer to, layers to expand. The stars become a red giant. When the core is hot enough, it starts to fuse helium into carbon. Uh-oh. If a star is massive enough, it will continue to fuse carbon into even heavier elements like iron. Ultimately, the star will collapse under its own gravity and then explode in a violent event called a supernova. Based on Chert's observations, this will one day be the fate of our own sun. I feel like they're setting something up. Watch closely, these balls move on their own. The ground is perfectly level, so what do you think causes this spooky motion? The answer is the moon. As it orbits our planet, the outer rock's gravity pulls on objects from different directions. In fact, it's pulling on you right now. All right, I think we've... Oh, except for this one. It's a cute guy. This anglerfish, I thought it's an anglerfish originally, specimen was found attached to the landing gear of one of our ships that flew close to Dark Bramble. It appears well suited to living in dark places with minimal atmosphere. That reminds me, wasn't there, um, I'm a big fan of uh, Grim Fandango. I think there was a creature like that in Grim Fandango. Can I? Oh, I can jump up there. <laughs> Whoops, I'm messing it up. Oh, there he is. Gonna tell us about the solar system, I guess. There you are. I just finished pre-flight observations and local conditions are good. Time to get our newest astronaut off the ground. And you'll be our first astronaut ever equipped with a Nomai translator tool. I confess, I've been giddy all day just thinking about it. We're better equipped than ever to unravel the mysteries of the Nomai. You and Hal should be very proud of your work. Tell me, what's your plan once you're in space? We're going to learn about the Nomai. I'll meet up with the other travelers. I'm going to go somewhere no one's gone before. I think I'll start with something small. 
I don't know. I'm going to wing it. What is it that we want to do when we get up there? I want to kind of meet up with the other travelers. You're going to check in with them, are you? Not a bad plan. No one knows the solar system better than our astronauts. Let's see. Chert is on the Hourglass Twins. Rybeck is on Brittle Hollow. And Gabbro is on Giant's Deep, last I checked. And, well, there's Feldspar, obviously. But, of course, we don't know where they are. Or if they're even alive. Feldspar has been lost for a very long time, I'm afraid. On a more cheerful note, you'll find Esker stationed on the Adel Rock. They're not a traveler so much as a lunar local, but I'm sure they'd appreciate a visit nevertheless. Well then, looks like all that's left is to send you off. All in all, it's a fine day for a launch. I'm ready to die in space. I'm ready to die in space or I'm ready to get off this rock. I think we're ready to get off this rock. Excellent. You'll be needing the launch codes then. Here they are. Best get off the ground before Slade makes any more modifications to your ship, eh? Good luck out there. Let me know if I can help you with anything. Oh, neat. The Hourglass Twins. What's that? We're there. The Adel Rock. Okay. Giant's Deep. Oh, that must be what we saw that broke up. There, it looked like there was like three pieces. Where it's like bending the stars around it into it like a black hole. So this is what we're going to be exploring. The Dark Bramble. That looks extremely imposing. Hollow. So I guess the first thing we'll probably do is check out the Adel Rock. Hmm, this is odd. According to my redshift calculations, every single galaxy in this image is moving away from us. In fact, the further away a galaxy is, the faster it appears to be moving away. It's almost as if the entire universe is expanding. But if that's true, was everything closer together in the past? And how far back can we extrapolate? Did the, did the universe have a beginning? Hornfell's observations. This is incredible. First I thought the points of light in this image were stars. But they're not. They're galaxies. And this image covers just a tiny patch of the whole sky. Which means the universe contains at least a thousand times more galaxies than we previously imagined. It's so crazy... Like, you just cannot wrap your mind around how small we are and how massive the universe is. I think I need to sit down. Yeah, no kidding. Can't use any of this equipment, I guess. Okay, I'm ready. So ready, I'm going to jump into that railing. Oh, we missed this. The strange rock moving around in this grotto appears to react to conscious observation. The level-headed among us realize there must be some sort of optical illusion at play, but Gabbro claims the rock exists in all possible states until it is observed, whatever that means. Whatever is actually happening, both sides of this debate agree the effect is extremely creepy. Interesting. Oh, it moved. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Okay, okay, okay. I am so this is this is great. This is great. This is exactly what I want. 
This is like an adorable, adorably fun exploration game. Wait. Oh, okay. I went. <laughs> I went to the wrong spot. So that was, it just downloaded our memories. Huh. Cause that uh, thing that it showed, it was like everything that we went through. Cool. Oh, nice. Oh, Hal's back. Hey, hey, so did you get a good look at the Nomai statue? Yeah, the statue looked at me and opened its eyes. Whoa, whoa, the statue was doing what? So, so its eyes opened and, and then you saw images from your own memories and glowing lights flying around you? you? You mean like a hallucination? Listen, no offense, but are you sure you're okay to launch, like, medically speaking? <laughs> no, that statue is definitely weird. I mean, if you're saying it happened, then I guess maybe it did, but, but why? Hornfels tried everything to get the statue's eyes to open, and nothing like this ever happened to them. I don't think you're going to get any answers from the museum statue, but Gabro said they were going back to Giant's Deep. Don't know which island they're, uh, don't know which island they're on, though. Okay. So Giant's Deep is where we're going to need to go to find answers about that. Maybe they'd be able to tell you more. On the other hand, Gabro's, you know, Gabro. So maybe you'd be better off searching for more info on your own. Jeez, now I'm really jealous. You're going into space. Hey. See if you can use our translator tool to find out more about the statue, okay? Good luck and safe flying. Anything else? We're on Giant Steep when I find Gabro. Gabro said they were going back to Giant Steep to do whatever they found that no, uh, deep to wherever they found that no my statue. One of the islands, I think. You remember Gabro plays the flute, right? Like all the time. I bet your signal scope could find them easily. If you do see Gabro say, oh, we already talked to him about this stuff. We're going. We're taking off. Hmm. Activate lift. I think I did I just walk by this before? Like a little bright bug or light bug a bright light bug looks like you're ready for takeoff the excitement of a launch is fun and all but i can't wait to get back to working on the new ship we're working on fixing the autopilot's avoidance system for this one uh sorry <laughs> Great. Enter launch codes. Sweet. We in there. Okay, what do we have? First aid, so this is all like our healing stuff. S or suit. I don't know if we should have this on all the time. Planetary chart of the outer wilds. Ship log. So these are places that haven't been explored. Giant's Deep, Gabro. 
How says Gabra went back to Giant's Deep to try to learn more about the Nomai statue in the observatory? Oh, so this is find in rumor mode. So this will update the map based on what we found out in the town. Oh, that's neat. So it connects the the connects the city with the uh, the outer space map mode. The interloper. <laughs> it's just like taped together. There's just like wooden boards and stuff. Hmm. Is that like the crystal that changes gravity? Oh my god, we're just like just nothing else. We're just going. View map. Okay, so we have we have access to the map anytime. The interloper. That's what that is. It's a comet. It looks like it's going around the sun and then around this anomaly, whatever that is. It's like some kind of black hole. Okay. Lift off time. Lift off and landing camera. Okay. Oh my god, it's happening. Where are we going first? Oh! Oh man. Equip scout launcher, equip signal scope. Engage autopilot and match velocity. Okay, so what's this? So we're kind of, kind of orbiting a bit. Oh my God, we're gonna crash. I want to find the uh, the moon. Giant deep. Oh, there it is. The Adel Rock. Okay, how do I uh, match velocity? All right. I want to, um, like, land on it. Oh, there's a scout. Put away the scout, okay. How do I engage autopilot? So that'll actually just take us to the Isle of Rock. Okay. Landing mode. Oh God, oh God, oh God. I think I landed. We're on it. <laughs> okay, let's go explore. Obviously we can't just walk out there. How do I, how do I leave? What hatch? That is so cool. Oh, neat.
Hey, there he is! Wait, he's not wearing a suit. I guess this is habitable? You don't need a suit for it? Oh, hey, it's you! Ground control didn't tell me you were launching. Long time no see. Actually, I guess it's been a long time since I've seen anyone. Just chilling out up here, all on his own. Don't the other travelers come by? The Lunar Outpost saw more traffic back when our ships were less sophisticated and needed more frequent repairs. Nowadays, it's mostly used to keep a set of eyes on things. Sometimes Chert comes by to say hi, but Gabbro is Gabbro. And you know how Rybeck feels about unnecessary spaceflight. Don't go! Uh, I mean, anything else you, <laughs> you wanted to ask? Seems lonely up here. A little. I'm in touch with ground control. Hornfells and Gosan, mostly. Gosan? Gosan? I don't know. I'll probably say it differently every time. And they radio up to chat now and then. And when ground control forgets I'm up here, and they usually do, so that is quieter. I launch my little scout at the village. They forget about you? I don't blame them. For one, I don't check in as often as the other travelers, since I'm always in one place. And it's not so bad up here, really. At least it's peaceful and quiet. You don't always get that in our solar system. <laughs> I like the got the rocking chair sound. Oh, look at the sun coming up. Let alone in our village. Um, Was that you whistling? Probably. Or actually, definitely. The other travelers carry instruments, so they don't bother whistling. You could pick up their music with the signal scope, you know? Best spot for that is the North Pole. Great reception. North Pole is marked in red on your mini-map. But the Adel Rock is pretty small moon, really. Just go north, you can't miss it. Um, what is this place? Haha, <laughs> very funny. Oh, stars above, you're serious, aren't you? That's just depressing. Ugh. Welcome to the Lunar Outpost, which apparently the space program doesn't bother to teach anyone anymore. When we first started at Outer Wilds, travelers used to bring their ships here all the time for repairs. Our space runner technology has improved loads since then, but the older ships tended to, uh, fall apart a lot. Like more, uh, like more than they do now. Using the outpost cut down on the number of launches and landings taking place in the village, and also the number of fires. Nowadays, though, it's mostly just me up here raising saplings from the timber hearth and keeping an eye on things. Talk to you later. Ship log updated. Unidentified signal nearby. Can't go into any of the houses. North Pole, eh? When you get all of them lined up. Oh, that's so cool. The other side of the sun. Esker signal scope log. Day 48, still not picking up Ryback's banjo from Brittle Hollow. I'm sure they're fine, but I'll feel better once I can hear their music. Day 51, listen to Chert play for a while today. Unrelated, someone should tell Porphy and Gosan. Their flirting is not subtle from an aerial perspective. Day 55, banjo music coming in loud and clear today. Sounds like Ryback's doing okay. That hoof, I was worried. Day 63, today I thought I heard something strange. I don't know, it was probably nothing. Day 70. No, it's back again today, too. Something strange is coming from Timber Hearth. Okay. 
Phase 76. Okay, I know this is crazy, but the sound from Timberhar sounds exactly like Feldspar's harmonica. But Feldspar disappeared in space ages ago. Can't be them. Day 88. It's still here. This is creepy. Maybe my signal scope is broken? I better talk to Nice. Ship log updated. Okay, everybody, I think this is going to be the end of the first episode. I don't actually understand how the game saves, so I'll have to figure that out after. Thank you so much for joining me on this cool adventure. I think I'm really going to like this a lot. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I'm definitely going to continue playing it. It's kind of like a nice, light, fun, interesting exploration game. With some... There's some tension, too. Like, I don't know if you could die. I don't know what happens when you die. It's going to be interesting. This is Luckless Love Luck signing off for now. I'll see you on the next one. And I love you all. Mm-hmm. <laughs>